In this tutorial, I want to start looking at externalizing bean configurations. So what do I mean by that? When configuring beans in the configuration file or using Java config, you must remember it's not good practice to mix deployment details, such as file paths, server addresses, usernames and passwords within your bean configurations. Usually the bean configurations or bean definitions are written by application developers, while the deployment details are a matter for deployers or system administrators. Spring comes with a bean factory post-processor called Property Placeholder Configurer, and its purpose is to help externalize the bean configurations into properties file. You can then use a variable in your configuration file and also in your Java configuration classes. And the property placeholder configurer will load the properties from the property file and use them to replace the variables. So just as an example, I'd like to revisit our message printer import class. And as you notice, we've got a couple of attributes here. We've got a name and a separator. And we've annotated these attributes with the value annotation and a hard-coded string is set. Now I'm going to use the property placeholder configurer to change this so we can dynamically set these strings in a properties file. So no longer dependent or hardwired into the code base. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of ways really. First of all, we're going to look at how we can do that within our application.xml file. And then we're going to have a look at how we can actually do that using Java config. Now the values I want to set it with, I've placed in the properties file. I've got two files. I've got one called live-config.properties and another called test-config-properties. Now, as you can tell, one is in our live environment and the other one is set in our test environment. The contents aren't particularly special. We can have a quick look. We've got our live config properties file and we've got a message printer.name, which is the name of our property. And then the actual value is live printer service with a colon on the end. And then the second value is message printer.separator and we've basically got three at signs as our separator. We've basically got the message printer.name and the value is test printer service with a colon and then message printer.separator. I'm actually going to change that to being something different. So I just have some plus signs. We've got three pluses there as the value and then just save that. And remember these properties files are really just key value pairs. So that's the key, which is message printer.name and the value. Now we don't need to have this qualified by a message printer. We can just have name, but I've done it this way so we can actually mix different messages for different classes within the same file. So how do we get the actual values from this property file substituted into the name and the separator rather than these hardwired values? Well, let's have a look at how we do that using our application.xml file. All we need to do, if I'll do it here, doing a control space and then we scroll down to the context colon and then you'll see under context colon there's a property hyphen placeholder and this is the element we need to include into our XML configuration. Now there's one other attribute we need to set on this because we actually need to define the location of our properties file. So we can put a space in here and then do control space again and let's see what attributes we can find. And we can scroll down to location and that's the attribute we need, so we'll select that. And then we need to set the location of the file, which is relative. Ours file lives in the resources, spring, live, config, properties. And what we do is because we're actually searching the class path for this file, we start the actual location name with class path, followed by a colon. And then we do the forward slash spring and then the file name, which is live iPhone config dot properties. Now remember we have this element coming up because we actually have the context namespace. And that's already set because we're doing component scanning. But if we weren't using component scanning, we would have to set this namespace. So the context namespace will be included. So just bear that in mind. If you're not already having or using the context namespace, you will need to set that. So it's this actual element of context colon property placeholder, which does the configuration for our Beam Factory post processor, which does the property replacement. But to do the property replacement, we need to actually make some changes here within our value annotation. 
And what we need to do is rather than having a hardwired string, we keep the double quotes, but we replace them with a dollar, followed by an open curly brace, and then followed by a closed curly brace. And then within the curly braces, we include the actual key name. In this case, it would be message printer dot name. So we can copy that. and paste that into the middle of the curly braces. So we're doing a substitution from a hard-coded string to really to a key reference to our key within our properties file. And then we can also do the same for the separator. Make a copy of that and replace the string with dollar sign, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. In the middle, we can just paste the key, which is message printer dot separator. And that's all we need to do. So the configuration steps are fairly straightforward. We need to set up firstly the element for our property placeholder and then provide that the location of where our property file actually lives. And then within our code, we can actually substitute our hardwired values for reference to the key within the properties file. And of course, we can just run that just to check everything works. So let's see that running. All we need to do is go to our client because we're running the live version here, not the test version, to right click run as Java application. And then you'll see app for the separator being used. And also the name is live printer service with a colon. Okay, so in the next tutorial, I'm going to look at how we can actually have a separate configuration. In fact, this test config properties for our test environment. So it runs in a similar way to the live one, only using actual test properties.